Alex Hunter, episode 143. The election heats up. Right, I'm placing my bet. I'm placing my bet on Moral. Though, ah, Leorio. Torn. Not her. The audacity of her to call herself Cutie Beauty. Oh, is Bisky. Is Bisky out? Morally ambiguous take from Bisky. <laughs> Thank you, Netero, and also Rotten Hell. Really, I'm just sort of hoping the Oreo wins because I made some offhand joke about him being president or chairman that I can't even remember the context of. Well said. Wait, is he showing up just to drop off the panda? All right, Jing has been revealed, but. Also, nothing has been revealed at the same time. I guess the most fascinating takeaway is that he's so reviled. It feels like everything we've seen up to this point has been largely colored by Gon's imagination. You know, I thought he was the man, and maybe he is, but people definitely don't seem to feel that way. I can't help but think, though, just due to the craziness of the show, that there's some non zero chance his nan is something predictive, and that actually he is stomaching unpopularity for some larger, more noble cause. Or he's a jerk. Or it could be both. <laughs> I respect that. She was never seeking the vote. I respect that. Okay. Dodge the bullet there. <laughs> Think of the food programs, though. Also about Jing. Wow, does it make a lot more sense now that he named someone against his will. Even some of the more positive allusions to him we've seen from others, like Kite. It's not even 100% clear. It isn't something in the vein of all for one, where, like, he shows up at your lowest when you're broken, and then is like... No, I care about you. Why don't you become my puppet for just as long as I need you to be, and no longer? Sin X and X Claw. These the hunters or the puppets? Ah, the, the hunters. The hunters. The hunters. The hunters. The hunters. The hunters. The location. And bring it with you. Well, of course. Wouldn't be any fun if you didn't use texture surprise. Oh, I cancels texture surprise. <laughs> Good thing you didn't send texture surprise. Bonako is a remarkable character for being so off putting to me. So quickly, so simply. Motorcycle? Oh, it's all, it is also plain. Why didn't you use that before? Okay, this has got a lot cooler, to be honest. Smart. Maybe you could have thought of this before you set them in. Wow, this is Demon Core level of negligence. I mean, he's right. There's definitely no point sending them in now because they're dead. Hit him with your Psycho Crusher. That's what it's called, right? What exactly is the spirit of the Hunter Association? Everyone's talking about Netero and his legacy and honoring him. What did he stand for exactly? Can anyone define what that is? Is it gratitude? What? What? Ah. Truly honoring the spirit of Netero. I was going to say this alliance is going to be them eating each other. I thought I had more time to say that. It's another day in the survey core. <laughs> the mask can come off in here, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He might be right for the job. Just one Hisoka. We heard that. He's got narrator like powers. Is he flying the blimp? <laughs> of course he is. 
やっぱり車で病院内部まで入るという五島のやり方がベストだな。You trying to call Goto right now? He's unavailable. When was blimp training? Was it in between torture and darts? Can you like jump in? Like from, just jump out of the jet? He's gonna jump in from the jet. That's my prediction. <laughs> and I'm always right. Oh yeah, it's a blimp. It can descend. Well, that's a lame entrance. He's... Oh, I thought he was being controlled. Not very subtle. I mean, there's an obvious disadvantage, which is that we know you're going to the hospital. And the closer you get, the smaller the area you need to cover is. Oh, it's both. Why are some of them like zombies and some of them, you know, like perfectly coherent? Is it just their motor skills below the mouth? Are they really that dangerous, though? Are they Kalu is afraid of them? Okay, never mind. Wait a minute. There's a rat, right? Is it, uh, it's a grandma. It's Grandma Rocket. She's reporting to him. That's so cool of him to be thinking about the driver right now. I wasn't. Right, it's a lot easier for Illumi. Can you, uh, can you Aluka bluff somehow? Ask her a question. Give me your brain. Oh, okay, there it is. But accidentally. How much must they be paid for this amount of loyalty in these conditions? Yes! 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 But we know these can scale. Well... I don't know. Can it go from nail to brain? Oh, it's just nails. Oh, we got a wish now, though. Just give him a wish, yeah. Leverage. Okay. Alright, points gained. She's on a hot streak now. Helping Kluo and also being a jet. Yeah, I would do that though, clearly. He's thinking about the driver in the car. Allies, that's easy enough, no? Look at Luka. Is Luka having a great time as always? Soka spends a lot of time in the show being aroused next to trees, true man of nature. Then why are you? Oh, don't cry. It's okay. That's interesting from Illumi. It means that much to you, huh? This is a very... well... I mean, brace yourselves for this nugget of insight. They have a very strange relationship. More than I thought. This is infatuation. This is the kind of thoughts you have after a breakup with someone you lost your mind over. Finally, Kalua's real love interest revealed. I mean, I don't even think it's true. I think Kalua would move on pretty quickly. Probably be relieved. He still obviously does mean a great deal to Kalua, though. He made a tremendous, terrible impact. Yeah, you can do both. Classic. He's a true hunter. It's crazy how you can grow in some ways, but in the areas you're not exposed to, when exposed to them after a long time, you realize you haven't developed in that particular way or with that particular person. Things sometimes are surprisingly contextual in that way. Very simple examples of this, speaking of breakups and relationships, is you can be totally over someone and then hear a particular song for the first time in a long time and you're like right back there for a little while. Or you quit smoking in the winter and you get over the hill, you're not even thinking about smoking anymore. And then like that first breeze of summer rolls in and suddenly you're craving a cigarette because you haven't trained out of that feeling yet. You haven't had 
had that stimulus for such a long time that you haven't had the exposure you need to work on it. I mean, probably the most obvious example is this family that you haven't seen in a while or that you just have so much conditioning. For some things, it feels like you have to train each specific thing and context individually. <laughs> Figured it might be something like that. Hi. What is the value of a human hand? Is it always a request? Like, no matter what, no matter what she's, she asks for? Is that one of three? Interesting. That would make you killable. What the hell was that? That was the coolest, subtlest exit ever. You just phased out of there. Kuo is such a nice kid. Like, even after all that's gone on, his threat is I won't consider you a brother anymore. After everything Illumi's done already. For it to be something that actually pains him. It's like, you intentionally stabbed me in my leg. If you stab me in my other leg, we're not going to be friends anymore. I was wrong. It also very clearly speaks to Kuo because his choice given any wish in that moment was to heal Tsubo Tsubone, who he isn't that fond of. Just another example of the greatness Kuo can see being the greatness in himself. I didn't expect this turn of events for Aluka. I mean, I was caught up in thinking about it in terms of difficulty with questions like, what is the price of a human soul turns out it's just a different thing more related to the cor corruptness or something like that of the request there's something very karmic there what you put into the world is what continues into the world in another sense what you ask for is what you receive it might end up being like saving gone ends up with her asking for a thousand hugs <laughs> This is in the building. I mean, at this point, what is the vote going to solve? What is the new chairman going to solve? Masoka's here. Is he going to die on screen? Just like that reporter that interviewed Hagia. <laughs> How that doesn't make him number one, I'll never understand. Did you just say he's not a warrior? Wait, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. Damn, he's the man. He's humble too. That gives even more credit. God, there's been such a drastic change in my perception of moral from his first introduction, kind of chewing out Gonin Kalua, to now. He walked the walk, ultimately. <laughs> it's like, you know, someone scolds you and you hate it and you think they're wrong, but then they go and do it. There's nothing left except either absolute delusional hatred or respect. <laughs> And he wasn't even his element. Wow. That was fast. Hello. Yeah, he's still in there. Oh, he's not in there anymore. Who's left? Leora number two? It's Leorio. It's Leorio. It's gotta be Leorio. My lucky joke, I mean my prediction, will come true, finally. Wow, Ahsoka reminding us that he's Ahsoka. One forgets after dodgeball and so on and so forth. Ahsoka is not a great person. <laughs> Another nugget of wisdom. Jokes aside, Leorio is actually great for politics. Like, he's very passionate. He commands attention. He creates an energetic space that less convicted people will fall into. He's great at emotional appeals, which, let's be real, is a large part, at least, if not most of winning-oriented rhetoric. He murdered Jing and in a weird way he benefits from not being strategic and being all over the place he's hard to predict I mean there was a smart guy but there are some circumstances where being less capable is an advantage this is obviously not always the case but in certain things in certain moments if it goes well being ignorant of something means you're not fully understanding the thing which may mean you're missing potential dangers which would have been emotional obstacles due to your lacks of complex thinking about a thing you're not overthinking a thing, which can be terrible, but also can mean you're keeping it really simple and going for the obvious thing. And then people who are wrapped up in the complexity and the mind games of things will have just totally missed the easiest strategy. I can't prove this at all. This might just be success bias or drawing patterns on total randomness, but I get the feeling sometimes that this is the case for investing in stocks. Some people are like, I think this company is really cool and they invest in the company and it does well. Whereas people who are just, you know, neck deep in analysis and charts and financial reports and have their ear to the ground are just getting all these 
signals that actually are just noise. Actually, one thing that maybe is more concrete is I think ignorance of the difficulty of something is a real boost for just entering a thing. There are plenty of things for which if I had known just how difficult they were, how long I'd be struggling with them, I never would have entered and I'm glad I didn't know because I entered them and did it, you know? Learning Korean is an example of that. Like for all I've worked, it just feels like the farther I go, the farther there is to go and I never would have agreed to that. But I'm glad I didn't know that because as far as I still have to go, I've also gotten really far and have yielded a lot of fruits from it. YouTube probably also in a similar category. Maybe this is also somewhat of an explanation for the idea of beginner's luck. It's not the best thing. I mean, it's only really great if the anxieties you're not seeing are actually irrelevant anxieties and will not cause problems. The best is you understand something really fully and you're good at it, but it can create kind of a lucky slipstream. Long term, the experts will win, but sometimes you're playing Gunji and because you have zero conditioning about how it's played, you make a wild move that floors your opponent and ends up being really useful. Lirio feeling like that wild card in this situation compared to someone like Pariston, who's just very adept at politics, very calculating, has planned this from the beginning, has rehearsed mannerisms and a strategy, and Lirio's out here all energy and feeling and emotion and heart. Actually, come to think of it, this is not totally a novel thing in the show. Gon has elements of this, like Gon ends up having success is partly because he's not really fully aware of what's going on. And the downside of that is almost getting killed by Nefropedo. The good side of that is, you know, I landed a hit on Netero. The limitations mean nothing. And there's Moral, who maybe is a more refined version of that. Clua's Reformation may be also tied into that somewhat, where it's like, better than that is you understand everything fully, but you don't let anything that's not helpful enter. So like I was saying before, ignorance is sometimes useful in not having the anxiety that comes from being aware of the danger and the risks. Better than that, is being aware of everything, but being very discerning about what is making the decision, not allowing anything in without a function, which is something I think is really practical and I like thinking about, where it's very easy to get gripped by emotions instinctually, and that is maybe okay, but it's cool to know you have something like a final say in how you proceed, and it can be fun and feel really cool to try to evaluate and find a scale for what feels really significant and threatening versus what actually is important. Then there's so many examples. So like past regrets, not useful by itself, only useful if it contains some lesson that you can take away with you. Fear of embarrassment, generally an overstated emotion that does not represent actual risks anymore. Fear of failure, fear of trying, where the much bigger danger lies in being dominated by those things. Reading too much into errors and thinking that they are somehow pervasive to your soul rather than just an error. There's that psychological phenomenon of learned helplessness where if you fail with a certain frequency or a certain severity, you sort of internalize the failure as it being part of you. And you start not only ignoring, but being antagonistic towards lifelines where success actually could occur. How dare you try to help me or fix my situation? Don't you know it's unfixable? Don't you know I just wasn't born one of the chosen ones? That's not Leorio. <laughs> Bottom line, Leorio for chairman. His only weakness, attractive women.